New snowstorms to watch over the next 10 days as an active track moves in from Canada, heightening winter weather risks. Welcome in, folks. Happy Friday, December 5th and uh, continuing to track what has already been a very active month of snowfall for many of us. And spoiler alert, I think the train continues as the pattern setting up looks overall pretty favorable for swaths of snow through portions of the country. Exactly who will see it and how much could fall? Well, that's what we'll discuss in today's video. But if you're new to the channel, welcome. My name's Gerald. I'm a meteorologist at WCCB Charlotte. If you haven't already, go ahead and like the video, subscribe, and hit the bell for the latest notifications. Doing so, it's free. It doesn't cost you a penny. It doesn't sign you up for anything. All it does is help the channel out and help me, uh, help me continue to run it for free like I currently do and help to keep you weather wise. All right, let's dive right on into that forecast for you. And uh, looping next to me, you've probably been uh, taking a look at as I've kind of talked my uh, or talked your ears off probably rather over the last little bit is the latest run of our afternoon European computer model and showing that active track. You can see system after system working in from uh, Canada and diving down south throughout the United States. And I think that's going to be a pretty uh, common theme over the next little bit. I'm going to load up my writing utensil here and see pop up across the screen uh, so I can track it for you. So you can see one system there and then another system after that and another one after that. And you can kind of see the general idea are these Alberta clippers that develop up into Canada and fly through the Midwest and into the Mid-Atlantic and Northeast. Now, Obviously, everything to the north of that is going to have a heightened chance of winter weather. That's where we've got the cold air bottled up. And trust me, there will be plenty of it over the next 10 days. But the question becomes, can we get a big storm to form once this hits the coastline and right up the coast? And that's what I'll really have my eye on. But either way, many of us are going to see the snow. In fact, a lot of us already have seen it. If you take a look at the observed snowfall just over the past day, we had a nice swath of snow work right through Virginia last night, uh, even north of Nashville into southern uh, Kentucky and into southern in West Virginia getting some of that snow. Now, unfortunately for my friends down in North Carolina, this one did not pan out quite as well as we were hoping for it to. But either way, our friends to the North in Virginia, many of you saw your first snow of the year yesterday, and uh, it might not be the last one. Either way, it's already been an active winter and a lot of snowpack has been laid to the north. So as these uh, low pressure systems continue to ride right along the southern uh, edge of the snowpack, all that cold air getting bottled up to the north, there's going to be plenty of it to add more to this pack as well as potentially start to fill in some of the gaps. I know our friends along the I-95 uh, from really Baltimore up through Boston have been snow starved so far this year. A lot of folks in North Carolina, uh, South Carolina and into Southern Tennessee and uh, kind of surrounding areas also being pretty snow starved. Can we start to fill in some of the gaps? Well, I think there's at least a chance. Let me show you why in some of our computer model data and we'll start to break down these snow threats one by one. All right, so we need two things for snow, and they're pretty uh, two common things to imagine. You need cold air, obviously, and you need some sort of or form of lift in the atmosphere uh, to get precipitation to fall within that cold air. Let's start with the cold air component, and this is, again, just going to be a broad look at the next 10 days or so, and you're going to notice we have a very active track of these shots of Arctic air moving down from Canada these are 925 millibar temperature anomalies, uh, or not really anomalies, I should say, but just rather temperatures in general. Anything those blue colors are colder on the chart, so your blues, your pinks, your purples, even your whites, that's cold enough for snow or some form of winter weather, generally speaking, then on the other side of that, not so much. But notice, we get one shot of cold air by Monday, Tuesday. That could produce some snow. I'll show you where, and yeah, folks in North Carolina, keep your fingers crossed, just maybe. And then maybe a little warm up, but another shot of cold air gets dragged down and then another shot of cold air and another shot of cold air and you get the idea now through the middle of the month it looks like an active uh, track here in terms of cold air continuing to get pumped into the eastern United States on top of that I think an active storm track now to get lift in the atmosphere, oftentimes the key for that is going to be mid-level spin and a trough to work on in. And I also see multiple shots of that. This is going to be more associated with those Alberta clippers I mentioned at the start of the video. And notice, uh, we'll back this up. You can see we had one little piece of energy. I'll circle it here. Uh, that just uh, flew right through the central part of the country and through the mid-Atlantic. And guess what? Yeah, we had a nice little snowstorm for some of us into Virginia. So the math starting to make sense here, right? You get the general idea. When's the next one? Well, I think right around here could be our next shot of spin. This time, uh, this would be Monday of this coming week, so the start of next week. And you can see we've got this general pocket of spin here associated with a trough. You've got another pocket of spin up in the northeast. That could produce some uh, interior northeast snow. 
and potentially another mid-Atlantic snow event, North Carolina, Virginia specifically, uh, even uh, potentially Kentucky and Tennessee. I'm watching you by Monday for a storm system. And then guess what? It keeps coming. Another shot of energy by the middle of next week, Wednesday and Thursday. You see more of this spin showing up, working on in. Could that produce another winter weather event? It's possible. If that one doesn't do it, check it out. Another piece of spin about a week from now, the start of next weekend. So you get the idea, folks. We've got a lot of energy and a lot of cold air, and it's bound to link up eventually for some of us. I think that's going to be the common uh, forecast over the next seven to 10 days. Let's break these down event by event. Let's start with the Monday one. Like I said, I think portions of uh, the Mid-Atlantic uh, could once again get some snowfall. Let me show it to you, show you the chances of it happening, and then we'll briefly touch on the events to follow after the Monday storm. All right, let's go back to the map. I just showed you that mid-level spin, and uh, let's break down Monday a little bit more in depth. So it looks like a piece of energy is going to fly in out of Canada. We're going to get cold air to work on in for your Sunday and Monday, and then this energy works in, and uh, it's not overly impressive. I'll start with that. I do not expect a big snowstorm out of this, but notice these red colors in here. And if I back it up a little bit more uh, right here to about Monday morning, we've got a bit of a Vort Max, as we call it, or some of the brightest red colors over northern Mississippi. Mississippi and Alabama. And where that moves to, that's going to create lift in the atmosphere uh, thanks to something we call quasi-geostrophic theory. A lot of meteorological uh, terms there, but the point being where that uh, red color moves to is where you're going to start to get lift. We've already got a bit of divergence aloft over the Carolinas and Virginia. That's going to help to create some lift. And then this Vortmax is going to kind of amplify even more with that lift. And uh, in a, anyway, that means you get a higher chance of precipitation on top of the fact that the trough that's producing this lift is bringing in cold air. So it's not a half bad setup. Now, it's again, more of a clipper like setup. So this is not going to be probably your classic snowstorm by any means. But could we get some rain and snow showers? Absolutely. In fact, I would say that's my forecast right now is scattered rain and snow showers through Virginia, North Carolina, and then probably more so rain than snow in South Carolina. But even then, it could see some lift. Here's what it looks like on the European model by Monday afternoon. You can see you've got this blue and this green showing up over the Carolinas, specifically North Carolina and into Virginia as well. And you've got cold air working in. So you see some of those scattered snow showers moving in. And at the same time, I showed you earlier, we have that lift into uh, New England as well at the same time frame I showed you at the start of the video. Guess what? Interior Northeast snow showers again. So if you're up into the Adirondacks, into Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine, the festive vibes continue that way. And then you've got this little system along the Southeast coastline uh, that also I think could produce some sort of winter weather into the Mid-Atlantic. What exactly are the odds of seeing that winter weather? Well, let's take a look at some of the ensembles and kind of break it down a little bit more in depth. We'll start with the European ensembles, really old, reliable, a great tool to use. Uh, it hasn't failed me, well, has failed me a couple times, but has failed me a lot less than the other models. Let's show it to you. So what are the odds of seeing an inch of snowfall within a 24-hour period? Well, look at this little explosion of chances over Virginia, North Carolina, and surrounding areas. And also add, I'm not forgetting my friends up further north. We're going to talk about you here in a moment, so don't worry. Uh, but uh, just with the Monday event specifically into the Mid-Atlantic, yeah, not bad, especially in the mountains. Boom, uh, down towards uh, the higher terrains near Asheville, about a 40 to 50% chance of seeing accumulating snow, about a 20% chance in the triad into central Virginia, heck, even down towards Statesville, Salisbury, uh, over towards Asheboro, Raleigh. I could see this being an event that works out okay for you. Same thing maybe even further east into North Carolina. So yeah, not a half bad look at all. On top of that, if you take a look at the blend of models, this isn't just the European, this is everything. What is the chance of just seeing snow accumulate in general? Not even up to an inch, but just seeing flakes at least fly around, maybe even sticking to the grass. Well, pretty good again into the mountains. Uh, Galix, I got uh, the pronunciation fixed on that into the comments. I think yesterday somebody said it's Galix, not Galix. So appreciate uh, the uh, correction there. Always uh, uh, am down for some constructive criticism. Uh, same thing down into southern West Virginia, though. You see this 40, 50, even some 60s trying to mix in. So not a slam dunk, but it's trended upwards. These were lower numbers yesterday, higher now than it was 24 hours ago. And uh, not overly high into Charlotte, but uh, you get a little bit further north. Greensboro, Durham, Raleigh, out towards Danville, even towards the Richmond area. Not a half bad chance of maybe a quick little winter weather event. Also add, I think this will shift, uh, but this is probably the highest area right now I would say to watch is from the triad into southwest Virginia and then back into the triangle of North Carolina. Could it shift a little bit further south towards Charlotte? It could. Should, uh, could it uh, shift a little bit further north towards Richmond and Charlottesville? 
also could. So things to keep in mind, but the signal growing for maybe some winter weather by Monday, once again, into the mid-Atlantic. All right, that's the Monday system, but I showed you earlier, that's not the only one I'm watching. Let's time out the other systems that could also produce big snow, especially for our friends up further north, the Midwest, the Northeast. Yeah, a favorable track for you coming up. All right, I showed you we've got plenty of spin flying around by the middle of next week. Does it materialize into a named storm? I say a named storm like this is hurricane season. Uh, let's try that again. Does this materialize into a winter storm? Now, I know the Weather Channel names these things, but not quite there yet on the GM Weather Channel. We are, we've yet to come up with names. If you've got some names, though, I will name the next one Frosty. Does that sound pretty good? Then we'll do Rudolph next. Anyway, what are the chances of these things getting going? Well, here's by Monday. You can see that little system down into the Carolinas and Virginia, like I mentioned, maybe some scattered rain and snow showers becoming a higher likelihood. Then another clipper tries to bring some snow into Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan by your uh, Monday night into Tuesday, gets into the Northeast. And then this is what we need to watch for into the near future. Can we get some coastal energy to get going with this? You can see maybe some low pressure tries developing along the Northeast coastline. That would be by overnight Tuesday into Wednesday. It's a possibility, not a guarantee, but a possibility. Then another clipper comes down, again, tries to produce some snow and tries to get going at the coast. Then check it out. By the time we get to next Friday, this is about a week from now. This is a lot more uh, any anybody's bet at this point. But the afternoon European model gets a much stronger clipper, slides it down, and we've got a full-blown winter weather event into the uh, Ohio Valley, into the Mid-Atlantic. Shows some good snow once again into Virginia, Kentucky, West Virginia. Uh, tries to get it awfully close to Tennessee and then tries to get it along the coastline. And you see the train just keeps coming. That's the European model, the GFS model. Uh, not the exact same, but has the same general idea. There's the Monday system into the Mid-Atlantic. Here comes one clipper, another clipper. Uh, gets some good snow chances into the Midwest, the Northeast. And uh, then does show by a week from now a much stronger clipper diving down, but it's further north with it and uh, tries to get a little winter weather event going uh, once again in that week time frame. So a lot of energy, a lot of cold air. That's what we know. What we don't exactly know is who exactly is going to win big out of it. What I can tell you, though, is who has the highest chance. And sure enough, the best way to do that is looking at the ensembles. Let's take one more look at it before I let you go. We'll start with the European ensembles, and once again, we'll start with the Monday system. You can see that signal for snow down into uh, North Carolina, Virginia, West Virginia specifically, uh, like we talked about. Then comes the next shot. I think if you're in um, uh, Minnesota, through the UP of Michigan, into northern Wisconsin, probably much in northern Michigan itself, and into the interior northeast, you've got a great shot of seeing accumulating snow over the next week. We're going to continue to build that snowpack. Uh, if, if any of you have trips up to the northeast, the interior that is, or uh, the Great Lakes for Christmas, I think a white Christmas is looking really good at least in terms of snow on the ground. Uh, now, in terms of if it'll be flying around, we've got some time to go till we get there. Either way, though, it looks good uh, for all of you folks. You keep it going, though, and this is the time that I've really got my eye on. This would be by, like I said, a week from now. This is when that much stronger system looks to develop. Where exactly it ends up, exactly how strong it is, that's still anybody's bet, but you can see snow chances rise again for much of the Northeast. Heck, even Boston not looking too bad, northern New Jersey has chances, about a one in five shot right now of accumulating snow into coastal Rhode Island, Connecticut, uh, New York City, down into Philly, D.C., Baltimore, even tries to get some straggling ensemble members to get snow into North Carolina and Virginia. Uh, but that's the one to really watch, I'd say, that I've got my eyes on for bigger potential would be right around a week or so from now as the European ensemble show it. GFS ensembles also showing the general idea. Here's Monday, that chance into North Carolina, Virginia. Then comes one clipper. Here comes the stronger one by a week from now. And you can kind of see the same general ideas. This one looks to have uh, more of a ceiling, if you will, or higher snowfall of a, a potential. So I got to figure out exactly how high that ceiling is and uh, who sees it. But definitely the Midwest, the typical lake effect regions, the interior Northeast, great pattern for you. Can we sneak in the Mid-Atlantic and the Northeast a little bit more? It's definitely a possibility on the table, but uh, we're just going to have to wait for time to tell and uh, wait for the models to come into better agreement. But Nonetheless, a favorable pattern I'm watching and I've got my eyes on. All right, folks, that's all I've got for you. I know probably not a longer, uh, not too long of a video today, but I got the point across for what I'm looking at and what I've got my eyes on. Obviously, as we uh, fine tune one storm with high end uh, potential more so, I'll spend more time on it. But either way, the pattern looks good through the next 10 days or so. It's just a matter of uh, getting all the puzzle pieces on the table to come together into a nice snowy puzzle itself.
All right, y'all have a great day. Stay safe out there. Stay warm. Enjoy the snow if you're seeing it. I'll see you all next time.